Welcome to Silver Series Secrets, the video tutorial series that helps you use Silver Series operator interface terminals with other Watlow products. In this installment, you will learn how to connect EasyZone controllers to the OIT via Ethernet, set up EasyZone products for Modbus TCP communications, create a new Silver Series project, configure Modbus TCP IP master communications drivers, and address data in EasyZone products connected to the OIT. We'll be using a Silver Series OIT powered by a DC power supply, a laptop computer with EasyWare 5000 and EasyZone configurator software installed, two EasyZone PM controllers with a Modbus TCP Ethernet IP communications option, an Ethernet switch and Ethernet cables, and a USB to 485 converter and communications cable. In order for the OIT to communicate with the EasyZone controllers, we'll need to connect all the devices to the Ethernet switch, set the OIT's IP address and subnet mask, and set the PM's IP addresses and other Modbus communications parameters. A Silver Series OIT may be connected directly to an EasyZone controller equipped with the Ethernet communications option or the OIT and one or more controllers may be connected together with an Ethernet switch. In either configuration, standard Ethernet cables may be used. No special crossover cables are required. Network cable can be connected directly to the screw terminals on the EasyZone controllers or to use cables with modular connectors, first connect the included Ethernet adapter to the screw terminals labeled E1 to E8. The illustrated connections conform to the commonly used T568B pinout. Some locations may use a different convention. In this tutorial, we'll connect the computer, the OIT, and the EasyZone controllers in one standalone network. Using standard Ethernet cables, Connect each controller to the Ethernet switch, also connect the Silver Series OIT to the Ethernet switch, and finally, connect the computer to the switch so that we can download programs to the OIT via Ethernet and use EasyWare 5000's online simulation feature. In addition to physically connecting these devices to the network, we must also configure each to use a unique IP address, and all the addresses must be on the same logical network. Normally my computer gets its IP address automatically from my company's network, but because I'm going to set up the OIT and controllers on a separate network with fixed IP addresses, I've disconnected my computer from my company's network and set its IP address in the range of addresses set aside for fixed addresses on small private networks. To set the IP address in the OIT, power it up and touch the lower right corner of the screen to see the menu bar. Touch the Setup button and enter the password. By default, this is 111111. You may have to touch the password field to make sure the numbers you type are entered there. Since this network has no resource for getting IP addresses automatically, choose IP Address Get From Below to set a fixed address. Enter the IP address and subnet mask. Since this network will not be connected to any other networks, the gateway setting is not important. Depending on what will be connected in your network, you may need to use different settings. Next, using EasyZone Configurator, we'll set up the EasyZone PM controllers. EasyZone Configurator communicates with the controllers via EIA485, not Ethernet, so we need to connect the computer to the controllers with a USB to 485 converter and shielded twisted pair communications cable. Each EasyZone PM is configured for standard bus communications, one set to address one and the other to two. Launch EasyZone Configurator. Choose Configure a Device while communicating with it. Click Next. Select the COM port and click Next. Choose the first controller. To set the controller's IP address on the Setup page, choose the Communications 2 menu. Set the Modbus word order to Word Low High. 
Since we're using fixed IP addresses, set the IP address mode to fixed IP address. Set the IP fixed address to the next address for our network. Set the subnet mask to the appropriate value. Make sure Modbus TCP enable is set to yes. Disable Ethernet IP unless you plan to use that protocol with another device. Set display units to the temperature scale you want. Set data map to 2. And set non-volatile save to yes so that the parameter values you change via the OIT will be retained in the controller's non-volatile memory. We need to repeat this for the second controller. To go back to the list of found devices, select the device, the top level in the menu list, and click back. Select the second controller, and we'll set it up the same way as the first except for the IP address which we'll set to the next available value. You may want to use EasyZone Configurator to set up other parameters in the controllers for your application such as input type and set point, but for this example we're done with it. Close EasyZone Configurator. Cycle power to the PM controllers to make the IP address change take effect. Launch EasyBuilder 5000. If you've previously edited a project, it opens automatically, so from the file menu choose New. Otherwise, you'll already see this dialog. Select your model. I'm using the 7 inch model and will create my screens in landscape mode. With the Use Template option set, click OK. The new project has two devices, the OIT called Local HMI and a Modbus RTU Master. Since in this project the OIT will communicate using Modbus TCP over Ethernet, let's change the Modbus RTU Master device by selecting it and clicking Settings. EasyBuilder 5000 refers to any device OITs communicate with as a PLC because that's a common type of device used with them. For PLC type, choose Modbus TCP IP Master. Name the device. Since you will add a Modbus TCP device for each IP address that must be accessed, it makes sense to use a name that helps you identify what will be communicated with at that address. The PLC interface setting is automatically changed to Ethernet. Click Settings and enter the IP address of the first PM controller. Click OK and OK. To add a driver device for the second controller, click New. For PLC type, select Modbus TCP IP Master. Name the device. Click Settings and enter the IP address of the second PM controller. Click OK and OK. Now there are three devices, the OIT or HMI, and one Modbus TCP IP Master for each of the two PM controllers. Now we can start creating an interface. In this tutorial, we'll set up the OIT to display the process value in each of the two controllers. Consulting the manual, you can find the address for the analog input 1's process value is 360. Add a numeric display for the process value in PM controller 1. Enter a description. For PLC name, choose EasyZone PM1. For address, choose 4x and enter 361. You must add a 1 to the address indicated in the EasyZone manuals. On the Numeric Format tab, for Data Format, choose 32-bit float. Click OK and place the field. To create a label, select the Text tool and enter the label text. Choose an appropriate color. Click OK and click to place the label. Add another numeric display for the process value in PM Controller 2. Enter a description. Select EasyZone PM2 for the PLC name. Choose 4X and enter 361. Make sure the data format is 32-bit float. Click OK and place the field. To label the second field, let's copy the first label, select the label, press Ctrl C to copy, and Ctrl V to paste. Put the copy where you want it, then click the background to deselect it. Double click to edit it, change the content, and click OK. After saving, compiling, and downloading the project, the OIT displays the process values from the 2PM controllers. We can add fields and other screen objects that read and set any other values in the PM controllers similarly. Let's review. 
to set up Modbus TCP communications between a Silver Series OIT and EasyZone products, you must connect the OIT and EasyZone controllers to an Ethernet network, set the IP address and subnet mask in the OIT, enable Modbus TCP and set the controller's Modbus communications parameters including the IP address, the subnet mask, the display units, and the non-volatile save preference. These can be done in any order, but all three must be done, and don't forget to cycle the power to the controllers if you change the IP addresses. The steps for creating a new Silver Series project that communicates with EasyZone products via Modbus TCP are Create a new project in EasyBuilder 5000 Edit or create a Modbus TCP IP master in the OIT for each EasyZone controller Set each master to the IP address of the corresponding EasyZone controller and remember, when addressing data in EasyZone devices, add one to the Modbus addresses found in the EasyZone user's manual. We hope you found this installment of Silver Series Secrets helpful. We'll explore additional topics in other installments.